everybody. Welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. If you are brand new to my channel, yay, you found me. I've been waiting for you. And if you're a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I truly appreciate your support. So as you know, as a subscriber, my goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision as to whether or not you want to spend time or money or both sometimes watching a specific film. So this specific film I'm doing a movie review of today is called Run Rabbit Run. This creepy Australian thriller is now available on Netflix. The movie is rated R and is one hour and 40 minutes long. And my movie review mom grade is a C. Now, it's unusual for our film critics to give the score before we explain anything. So stick around. Let me explain why I'm giving it the grade that I am. I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell, and then I'll point out things I liked and didn't like, as well as offer tips for parents, themes worth talking about, interesting lines or funny lines. And rec sometimes I'll give recommendations for other films that are sort of similar. All right. So in a nutshell, the story is about a fertility doctor who is struggling after the recent death of her father. Her daughter's strange behavior challenges her ideas about life and death. The movie is directed by Dana Reed, who returned to Australia after her successes on The Handmaid's Tale. Have you seen that TV show? It's very popular. And The Spanish Princess. So kudos to first-time screenwriter Hannah Kent, who wrote the screenplay from an idea conceived by Anna McLeish and Sarah Shaw of Carver Films. All right, so the list of things that I like begins with Sarah Snook. She's absolutely fantastic and gives an excellent performance in this movie. I had never seen her in anything before, although she has been in plenty of popular TV series. So comment down below. Let me know if you've seen her before and if that's what drew you to watching this film. The young actress who plays Mia also did a fantastic job. Her name is Lily Latour or Latore, Latore. <laughs> so I always worry about child actors being in really super creepy, scary movies uh, to what they might do to them psychologically. I'm such a mother, right? That I worry about that. Um, you know, she'll grow up and go, oh, what a creepy movie I was in. <laughs> In the movie, we see beautiful cinematography. We get to go to Australia and visit and see some of that beautiful landscaping. And if you love beautiful cello music, I think you're going to enjoy listening to the dramatic musical score that features a cello. So the movie, one thing that I like about it is that it leaves the audience rethinking what it was that they just saw. I like movies that are a little bit ambiguous. So you're like, wait a minute. Does it mean this or does it mean that? And either could possibly be true. And so that definitely happens in this film. Now, there were some things I didn't like or just thought could have been done better. For example, it is very slow moving. So many scenes are repetitive and because of that tiresome without adding any new insights. We basically see the same scene over and over again, not exactly, but you know, the gist of what happens in that scene. So we're not learning any new information about the characters. It's just adding length to the movie. And many of those scenes could have easily been cut without the story changing any meaning or significance. It's hard to really like any of the characters in the film. The mother and the daughter fight and scream at each other constantly. So that's unpleasant. And it makes us not like either one of them also. Uh, I wonder why don't people turn on the lights in their houses? That happens so much, of course, in scary movies. But I'm like, really? I always turn on lights. I don't want to be left in the dark unless I'm trying to sleep, of course. The lighting in the scenes most of the time is super dark. And I'm not sure if that was a choice. Well, it must have been a choice by the director to make it really eerie. Another thing that's very eerie is uh, the music. It makes you think, all right, something creepy is going to happen but then it usually doesn't. You're like, well, that was sort of a waste of creepy music. However, the music is throughout the entire movie, you know, because the whole movie is just kind of creepy. So here's a spoiler. 
I was annoyed. Close your ears. Don't listen if you don't want to know. But I was annoyed that the rabbit is really just a red herring. I kept expecting it to be more, do more, and it never really did. And then, as I mentioned, some of viewers won't like the ambiguous ending. Let me give you some tips for parents. There is some profanity, including F-bombs. Some people get wounds from accidents and various things. And so we see some blood and bandages and that kind of thing. There's talk of death. There's um, a couple who's divorced. And so we see a remarriage on one side and how difficult that is for the other. Uh, some of the themes are marriage, divorce, families, past lives specifically, memories, grief, PTSD, guilt, and overall emotional health. And I'm not going to tell you more than that. So I like to write down funny lines and interesting lines just so I can share them with you so you can get a taste and a feel for the script and the dialogue. But I didn't write down any funny lines because this is a chilling psychological horror. There is not a whole lot of humor happening in this movie, if any. So I will share a couple of the interesting lines and you can see all of them at my website, moviereviewmom.com. So Mia, who again is played by Lily uh, Latore, she says, I, it's really creepy the way she says this too. She says, I miss people I've never met all the time. And you're like, okay. <laughs> and then another time she's really mean to her mom. And uh, they just, like I said, they're constantly fighting. And so Mia yells out, you're a monster to her mother, which of course is a dagger in her heart. You know, you don't ever want to have your child tell you that. And then I don't want to give away any of the plot, so I'm not sharing any of the other lines with you. But I want to share some recommendations with you of other movies that I instantly thought of while I was watching that. The first one is called Monstrous, and it's a horror, but at the end of the movie, you're going to go, oh, <laughs> believe it or not. Another very creepy movie is Hereditary that came out in 2018, and there's no feel good ending on that movie. And then the last one I thought of is The Witch that came out in 2015. So these are horror movies, um, but there is a little bit of a twist going on. And I love twists. I don't really love horror movies. And so I watched this movie, Run Rabbit Run, without knowing anything about it. Uh, and I like that. I often don't watch trailers just to kind of keep it as a surprise. And in this case, I didn't even read the description of the movie. I just saw it come through and thought, okay, I should review this, uh, which is not always a good idea. But anyway, I hope if you watch this that you enjoy it, knowing ahead of time a little bit. Be patient because it's slow moving. And I think you might get a kick out of, I don't know, kick is the right word, but you might uh, enjoy I don't even know if that's the right word. Anyway, you might enjoy the ending and it might take you to a place you didn't expect. All right, have a fantastic day and I will catch you in the next movie review. Bye for now.